Good day, student. My name is Mr. Adewale Karode, and I'm your mathematics teacher for today, and I'll be teaching you mensuration. This class is mainly for SS1 student, and at the same time, the SS3 student is going to serve as a revision class for them in preparation for the forthcoming exam. What do we tend to achieve at the end of this class? At the end of this class, viewers at home should be able to define mensuration and give identity types of mensuration. Two, state properties of plain and solid mensuration. Three, calculate the perimeter, area, and volume of plain and solid mensuration. What is mensuration? Mensuration implies measurement. It is also a mathematical operation involving measurement. We can also see it as a geometry applied to the computation of lengths, areas, or volume from a given dimension or angle. We have two different types of mensuration. We have what is called plain mensuration and we have what is called solid mensuration. What is plain mensuration? Plain mensuration, they are two dimensional shapes that deal with two things. That is the length and the breadth. So that shows anytime we go into calculation of plain mensuration, which we also call two dimensional shapes, we are dealing with length and the breadth. Let's see some common examples of plain mensuration. We have many examples here. The example one, that is the shape with red color is what we call circle. The shape with blue color is what we call square. The shape with purple color is what we call triangle. The shape with green color is what we call rectangle. The next shape is what we call pentagon. The shape with orange is what we call trapezium. The shape with yellow is what we call hexagon. And the shape with light green is what we call octagon. And the last shape there is what we call rhombus. The second types of mesuration is what we call solid mesuration. A solid mensuration is also called three-dimensional shape because it deals with three things. That is the length, the breadth, and the height. What are examples of solid mensuration? One, cube. Two, cuboid. Three, square-based pyramid. Four, cone. Five, rectangular base prism. Triangular base Pyramid, cylinder, and sphere. Let's see some examples at home that look like all these measured solid mensuration. The first one there is cone. What object at home look like a cone? Good. Ice cream. It look like what? Look like a cone. That means a cone has a circular base. A cone has a circular base and it has a curve to connect. Let's look at the second example. Keep. It has six square faces. It has eight fatter six. What object at home that looked like a keep? Good. The keep sugar box looked like a keep. And even the keep sugar on its own looked like a keep as well. Good. Let's consider the third example, cylinder. It has a two circular base that is a, a, a big curve. So that shows it has a top circular and a base circular and it has a curved surface too. What example, what object at home look like a cylinder? Good. Milo thing on the dining table look like a cylinder. That's good. That's a good example of cylinder. The fourth one, the sphere. Good. The football look like that. Good. 
Good. The fifth example, pyramid. That's good. Those are the examples of three-dimensional mesolation that we have. Let's just go into calculation. On our, let's see how we can calculate perimeters of a plane mesolation. We are going to pick the first one, which we call square. What are the properties of a square? A square has four equal sides. The opposite sides are equal and parallel. All angles are equal. That means we have three properties of a square. Can you, can you measure that to me? Good. The first one, it has four equal sides. The opposite sides are equal and parallel. All angles are right angle. How do we get the perimeters of a square? Yes, because we said it has four equal sides. Let's represent each side with L. That means we have the first side as L, the second side as L, the third side as L, the fourth side as L. Then the perimeters of such square will now be L plus L plus L plus L, which is equal to 4L. What about the area? Area of a square. That is length L multiplied by L, which is equal to L square. Good. We'll come back to that to take an example. Let's look at another shape. Rectangle. What are the properties of rectangle? Opposite sides are equal. Opposite sides are also parallel. And all angles are right angle. That shows the longest side on a rectangle is called length. And the shortest side is called breadth. As you can see on the shape, the longest side is represented with letter L. And the shortest side is represented with letter B. That is the length and breadth. How do we calculate the perimeters of a rectangle? That shows with from that shape now, we are going to see two L, which stand as the longer side as L. And we are going to see two breadth, which stand as what? As the shorter side. So that is L plus L plus B plus B. We have two L plus two B. Two is common to both of them. Let's take the two out. We have two into L plus breadth. Good. That, that is, the perimeters of a rectangle is 2 into L plus breadth. And the area is equal to length multiplied by breadth. Let's take an example. We have a rectangle with the longest side 8 cm and the shortest side as what? As 3 cm. That is, the length is equal to 8 cm and the breadth is equal to 3 cm. We want to find the perimeter. The longer side is 8 cm. That means we are going to have two 8 cm. 8 cm plus 8 cm, that is 16 cm. We are going to have two breadth. That is 3 cm plus 3 cm. That's 3 cm plus 3 cm. That will give us 6 cm. Let's add 6 cm plus 8 cm. 6 cm plus 16 cm. And that will give us what? 16 plus 6. 16 plus 6. That will give us 22 centimeter. That is the perimeter of this rectangle is what? Is 22 centimeter. What about the area? The formula for area is what? Is length multiplied by breadth. That is 8 centimeter multiplied by 3 centimeter. That is what? 24 centimeter. Good. Let's look at the next shape. The next shape is called triangle. Triangle, it has three sides. With what I have with me here, we have the dotted line as our height. Let's consider this triangle now. The angle is as three angle. Each angle is represented with capital letter. That is, the capital letter A is angle A. The capital letter B is angle B, and the capital letter C is angle C. Where the angle A face is what we call side A, and where the angle B face is what we call side B, and where the angle C face is what we call side C. Then, therefore, the perimeter of a what of a triangle will be what side A plus side B plus side C. Good. 
that is how to calculate perimeters of a wall of a triangle. Areas of a triangle will be half into base multiplied by height. Let's consider the next shape, circle. A circle. We want to see the perimeters of a circle. The perimeters of a circle is what we will still refer to as circumference of a circle. That is, the measurement of the outside boundary of a circle. That is the circumference of a circle and it's also the one we call perimeters of a world of a circle. We can see another property there, diameter. Diameter is a line that divides a circle into two equal parts. We can also see another thing there, radius. The measurement from the centers of a circle to the edge is what we call radius. Let's go into calculation now. That is, the circumference of a circle is equal to pi multiplied by diameter. And remember that diameter is the same thing as 2 multiplied by r. 2 multiplied by r. Now, what about the areas of a circle? Areas of a circle now will be equal to pi multiplied by radius square. Where that pi is equal to 22 over 7 or 3.14. That is a circle. Let's look at example now. Let's take this as an example. We are asked to calculate the areas of a circle using the pi to be what? 3.14 to find the areas of the following circle. We have the work example there. We are going to go through all this work example and you will check whether the answer is correct or not as our classwork. Thank you very much. Till we meet again, I am Mr. Adewale Kayode Abayomi, your mathematics teacher. Thank you and God bless.